Hello, sports fans and Lion Nation. Welcome to the first Fall 2022 War Room. And I am so excited that I get to do this first episode with the legendary, now head coach of the Sagu football program, Greg Ellis. Coach Ellis, it is just an incredible honor to be sitting across the table from you. And uh, I just want to tell you, we're really, really, from the Sagu Sports Network, we're very excited about you being here. And uh, so many great, it, just my interaction mm -hmm. with you has been absolutely delightful. And I hear amazing things about uh, your interaction with uh, a lot of the other people here at Sagu. Mm -hmm. My name is John Cookman. I am your host, uh, at least for this episode. Uh, I hope I don't uh, get fired. Um, but this is going to be really exciting. And, and the War Room is about uh, letting Lions Nation, those that support the athletic program of SAGU, uh, in on some of the behind the scenes, some X's and O's, some strategy. Um, and, and just the mindset of all the coaches. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the edition where we talk about football, obviously. Mm -hmm. So we're glad that you have tuned in. But uh, before we get into the strategy, could you give us, you, you haven't been here on the campus, uh, but for just a few weeks. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so you haven't had a lot of experience in the Sagu ways, but mm -hmm. give us just a little story uh, on an icebreaker, what's been the best moment here at Sagu? Well, um, John, first of all, thanks for having me on the show. Um, for me, there have been several, several and many um, amazing moments, if you would, um, since I've been here this short time. But I, I would have to say the, the most impactful one to me is more along the lines of the philosophy mm. of SAGU and their athletic programs. Okay. Um, you're hard-pressed to find an athletic program that searches for excellence on the field but also allows the integration um, to express the relationship, the importance of a relationship with Christ. So to mm. me, wow. that's a breath of fresh air yeah. um, that, um, that I think more schools need to take that approach, to be honest with you. All right. So... The, the icebreaker has the the ice is broken. Okay. Let's get into uh, the mentality really really quick. We all know you're the legend from the NFL, <laughs> and um, and and I mean if it, it, I've had a little bit of time with uh, Coach Ellis, uh, and it could be daunting. You're mm -hmm. a, you're a big human being. Big human being. And I like um, that. <laughs> and we know of your gritty play on. Uh, the field mm -hmm. um, could be a little intimidating. You are the biggest teddy bear I have ever <laughs> seen in my life, and uh, and so approachable. Yes, sir. And and it made me feel comfortable from minute one. Now mm -hmm. we had a little bit of connection, Correct. North Carolina connection. By yeah, the way. but we, we could talk about that later. Yeah. Um, and it was so great. It was just. It, it, Thank you for yes. for just being so inviting and approachable. Mm -hmm. That that was great. Yes. Um, but along those lines, you come from the NFL mm -hmm. down to a collegiate type of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. What is the mentality? What do you have to shift, if anything? I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. But what do you have to shift in your approach to coaching? At, at the collegiate level versus an NFL level. In the NFL, when I first got drafted, um, John, I figured this is going to be great. Mm -hmm. I'll do the same amount of football hours, no schoolwork, mm -hmm. and I'll have a bunch of free time. That's oh, honestly wow. what I thought. And when I got to the NFL, I looked at the schedule. I'm like, you actually expect us to be here from 8 to 5? And wow. that's with no extra time. And, and, and so, of course, you know, when I adapted to that schedule, I end up staying later than five to get extra film time in. But the NFL, it's your full-time job, right? Mm -hmm. um, college kids, it's, they still have to go to school. Yeah. So that time is split. So you have to be able to draw that line to understand mm -hmm. that, you know, Kids may miss some meetings. Mm -hmm. Kids may miss some practice time because they have classes. Um, that's their uh, first and foremost, foremost important thing that they have to take care of. So right. um, drawing that line is, is what I have to be careful to make sure um, to do. Very, very interesting. Great insight for us uh, lay people. We watch the NFL, yeah. but it's kind of hard to understand what a player at that level goes through mm -hmm. and great distinction between the college athlete too. And, uh, 
I, I would say, does that approach that you know there's that line that time is not uh, as um, available for the student athlete, do you feel like you have to accelerate the education process on all those fundamentals that you're trying to teach them? Um, or, or do you just accept that this is the limitation and you work within the limitation? No, no. You know, as Christians, you're not, we're not built and not meant to just accept something that's okay. not going to be at yeah. its best. Um, and so I tell my coaches, I said, thank God for the opportunity to figure out how to solve a problem. Wow. That's how I look at it. It's, yeah. it's, it's an opportunity to figure out how to do something a little different. Mm -hmm. And so our pre-planning has to be very, very potent in what we're doing. And mm -hmm. so I tell the kids and I tell the coaches, my pet peeve is wasted motion, wow. right? Because yeah. we, we can't have time for it. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure we're ready on the pre-side of things. And so when we get there, there's very little wasted motion. Now, of course, when we get out there, we may tweak some things, mm -hmm. which we have done thus far since I've been here. But just the pre-preparation, um, this is kind of like when Jesus speaks about um, building a house, right? If you mm -hmm. don't count the cost, but counting the cost means you do it on the pre-side of yeah. things. Yeah, and yeah. so just like us in our planning, we have to pre-plan it. And it would allow us to get a lot lot more done uh -huh. um, than without that plan, without the vision. Wow. So we know Greg Ellis to be the defense legend. Okay. So we expect that there is going to be a lot of defense uh, momentum coming in. I, I, I'm just saying that whether that's fair or not, I don't mm -hmm. know. But uh, that's kind of the expectation. Yeah. It, talk about the defense attitude right now. What are you seeing defensively in your group? Well, I, I'd be remorse if I didn't mention our defense coordinator um, mm -hmm. who, who actually played here, Coach Jared Hudgens. Yes, sir. Um, and I've been impressed with him, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, his commitment to the program, his commitment um, to football is, mm -hmm. is very high. His cr commitment to Christ is equally um, is more high as well, to be honest with you. So, um, I'm not going to take the reins. I mean, he's the defensive coordinator. Wow. And, of course, um, I interject stuff with him. We meet behind closed doors yep. um, that I can make sure that I'm understanding all the stuff that he calls and how he's going to structure and run the defense. Mm -hmm. um, but he has the reins on, okay. on the defense. Wow. Um, now, it, it's funny because when we're in staff meetings, I have to make sure um, that I'm not being biased um, by saying, you know, okay, us on the defense, if you would, including myself on sure. the defensive yeah. side. Um, but, yeah, I, he has the reins um, of the defense, of course. Okay. So on, on that quickly, mm -hmm. um, I guess in reverse mm -hmm. uh, or inverse, um, we don't see you as the offensive uh, guru yes. necessarily. Now, that could be totally false. Yeah. We, we just know you as the defensive, <laughs> defensive giant you are, right? Yes. So – uh, it sounds like you give uh, Coach Hudgens the defensive reign. I mm -hmm. would only assume you're going to uh, give Coach Battle the offensive reins as well. Yeah. Well, no, it's it's I weigh in on mm -hmm. the offense as well as I do on the um, defense and the special teams. Coach Porner mm -hmm. is our special team coach is doing a good job as well. Um, but for his offense, um, I do weigh in on it. Um, I pay attention to it, um, and I do the same thing that I do on defense. I make some suggestions, um, stuff that I think that can help us on off on the offensive end. Because I, I tell people, I think really the best coaches are guys that play defense. I think they make better offensive coaches. And I think guys that played um, wow. offense make yeah. better defense. And the reason why is because if you were truly a good defensive coach, I mean defensive player or offensive player, mm -hmm. you had to study the other side of the ball mm -hmm. in order to be good at what you're doing, you know. Mm -hmm. So for me to be able to relate to the offensive team to a better understanding of what goes through the defensive player's mind mm. is like I think – you're better fit to do that when you really think about it. Yeah, I you imagine would. when you were watching film when mm -hmm. you played it, you know, with the Cowboys, mm -hmm. um, you were predominantly watching the offense. Correct. Not, not, not wow, well, you know, for, again, a lay guy, you know, I got to think through. I yeah. haven't, haven't thought the logic steps, that, mm -hmm. but you're predominantly – Watching, watching offense. offenses. Yeah, yeah. that makes Be sense. Because most of the times, you're, when you're studying for an opponent, 
you may watch the game that you played against the opponent, mm-hmm. but by far you're going to watch more games that that opponent play against other teams mm-hmm. that you're not even in the game. Mm-hmm. So obviously you are looking at off as a defensive player. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at offense a whole lot more than defense. So many questions I want to ask you about yes. all that stuff. <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's kind of wind this down okay. uh, really quick. Got an upcoming game. This is the first game, and it's. A home opener. Yes. And so we get to see right from the beginning, um, expectations, Louisiana Christian University. Mm-hmm. Uh, talk about that game, what uh, the fans, uh, and you need to come out and support at Lumpkin Stadium, yep. 6 p.m. Yep. this Saturday. You'll be there, but naturally, if you can't, watch the Sagu Sports Network. It's going to be amazing. Yes. But but. Talk to us a little bit about what we can expect from well, Louisiana I, Christian. Yes, sir. And I think, you know, the expectation is that it's going to be very exciting, very fast-paced. I think you have um, two good football teams that's going to play against each other. Mm-hmm. Um, Louisiana has a lot of motivation um, because, you know, SAGU, we beat them last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and they feel that, uh, well, you wouldn't have beat us if – our quarterback would have uh, remained healthy and finished the game. Um, so you got a lot of what if stuff. Yeah, that was going a tight on. game. It was a tight game, and like I said, they lost their quarterback. So for us, I tell my guys, it's like, do understand what you're getting into. Okay, you know, this won't be one that you're walking into yeah. where it's going to be a casual situation. Mm-hmm. Um, they they want to come out and get revenge because you guys yep. beat them last year, yep. and then they want to come out and get revenge because last year was the best football record in Sago school history. Mm-hmm. So they want to get revenge. They feel like you're riding your high horse, and they want to be the first one to take you off mm-hmm. your high horse. Yeah. So it's going to be a hard-fought football game. It's, it's those kind of games that you love to play in mm-hmm. because it's, it's going to be all out. Uh, both teams are going to play really, really hard. Mm-hmm. Um, you know that. It's going to be tough. It's going to be hot. Um, but I'm expecting um, a hard-fought football th- um, game on both sides. Yeah, and coming out uh, first game of the season, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know if that's the warm up game per se no, that you not. really want, but it's, it's, it's what not. you got. <laughs> it's what we got. And, and, and I guess the the logic on it is uh, it's early in their season as well. Yeah, so that's right. Um, that's right. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's going to be a slugfest here at Lumpkin Stadium. This Saturday, 6 p.m., get your tickets. You can get them online. You can get, get them at the box office as you, you get to the stadium. Come and support. It's a purple out. Mm. And um, I, I heard that uh, they want everywhere, everyone to wear purple. So bring a purple shirt. If you don't have a Sagu shirt, just wear a purple shirt. And it's going to be a lot of fun. The band's going to be playing. Mm-hmm. It's just going to be great college game day atmosphere Please come and support your Sagu Lions football team. One last, co- uh, uh, co- like, not coaching question, mm-hmm. but um, why coaching? Why, why? You can do anything. You yes. can do anything. Yes. yes. And, and I I, I, that's cliche, but, you know, your advantages in this world are great and many. Yeah. Why coaching? Why Sagu? Give us a little bit of uh, what that tastes like. You know, I love football. Mm-hmm. It's it's one of the best ways, again, that you can teach young people amazing life lessons, if mm-hmm. you would. Um, and so that's why coaching for me and why I waited so late to get into it was because my family, I wanted to let them grow up, my, our kids grow up some. Mm-hmm. And we've been blessed to do that. We still have a 13-year-old. Okay. Um, but, you know, it's a, not, it's a lot easier than having three younger ones um, so that's kind of delayed me from getting full-fledged into coaching, if you would, because I know me. Yeah. I know the hours that I'll devote to it, that hours that I'm devoting to it right now. Um, why Sagu? You know, uh, opening was here. Uh, first, they extended the invitation for me to come uh, to be an assistant coach, and then some moves were made. Um, the head coaching job became available, and I decided to submit my name for the head coaching job. And people may say, you know, what – made you say, okay, I want to coach at Sagu. And for me, it goes back to the first statement I made. To be able to do something you enjoy doing, like coaching football, uh, and to do it in an environment that um, encourages you to include Christ in your day-to-day activities, I seriously think it is Amazing. I, 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 and people may say, you're just saying it because you work there. If I wasn't no, working here, no, I would I can tell, tell you them, that's not yeah, true. It's, it's, I truly feel like 
It's a breath. I, I told the president when he asked, it's funny, he asked me this question when he interviewed me. He and Dr. Godden, the AD, and I told them the same thing that I told everybody else since then. It's literally a breath of fresh air yeah. for me I bet. to be able to do something you love to do um, in an environment where they encourage you, hey, Let's lead people to Christ. Hey, let's encourage people to stay strong in Christ. Let's mm. teach people the yeah. importance of having that relationship with yeah. Christ. I love it. Yeah, you can be competitive and be a Christian at the same time. That's right? it. You can be tough. Yeah. Football is known to be a tough, um, yeah. um, barbaric sport, if you would. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that you can't be a Christian. Yeah. Man, that is such good good wisdom, good words. Thank you. Coach Ellis, mm-hmm. it has been an absolute pleasure to have you sit down here in the war room. Yes, in the war room. And uh, we're going to do this more, um, okay. and we'll post, post on our social medias when the upcoming. But uh, we definitely want to preview games uh, in the future, our home games. So I would anticipate there's going to be about six more with Coach Ellis. Okay. But you're not going to want to miss another war room with Coach Hank Moore. The volleyball, the Sagu women's volleyball team is on Fire. They're eight and zero. I think that is unprecedented, and, and not against. They they've knocked off a few top twenty teams wow. already, and uh, this is going to be an exciting conversation with head coach Hank Moore uh, coming to you very soon in the war room. This is John Cookman with head coach of Sagu's football program, Greg Ellis. It's a delight. Thank you so much for being here. Yes. May God richly bless you. Have a great day. <laughs>